Hello everyone. Uh, this time around I want to talk about leap seconds. Now there was an announcement uh, just recently that there will be a leap second at the end of December this year. So, But what exactly is a leap second? Well, it turns out that there's a long and complicated history on just what a second is in the first place. And it wasn't a big deal until about the 19th century, when accurate timekeeping uh, was actually starting to be really important. And it was generally held, and still is, that uh, our standard timekeeping system that we use for clocks and so on should stay pretty much in sync with mean solar time, and that is the actual days as they actually exist, not whatever is based on some arbitrary fixed uh, definition. Now, with the advent of things like atomic clocks, uh, we've got immensely accurate time measuring. And eventually the second was defined based on a physical property of a particular atom. Now, once that was defined and you had a fixed length for your uh, standard second, that wouldn't vary based on what the Earth's rotation is doing, well, now you started to have problems. Because if you ticked the time in standard seconds, over time, with exactly 24 hours in a day, your time is going to end up out of sync with the Earth's rotation, and you're going to have a problem with your synchronization. And because the Earth's rotation is slowing on average, so days are getting slightly longer uh, by a millisecond or so every so often, it means that no matter what we pick for the definition of a second, it's going to end up being wrong, and it's going to be end up being too short for keeping clocks in sync. So we have two, two options there. We could have two time scales. We could have the wall clock time, the universal time that we measure normal time in, and then the accurate time scale, which will diverge over time. And they'll diverge randomly. And you won't be able to tell at any given time how far out they are with relation to each other. Because the wall clock second would be changing over time. Whereas the standard second wouldn't be. Now this is obviously not an ideal situation. So uh, s some reasonably smart people back in the 70s came up with a solution. Leap second. So, that, so basically, whenever enough of an error is accumulated, then a leap second is added to, to uh, universal time to keep it in sync with, with mean solar time. And that actually works pretty well, and it allows all the clocks to tick standard seconds, which means we have one one length of a second to deal with. And that's actually really nice. And it also means that coordinated universal time stays within a second or so of the actual mean solar time. And that's actually quite nice. The problem is these leap seconds come irregularly. They seem to come about every 18 months. But they don't come evenly spaced. And odds are that spacing will change at some point in the, you know, over time in the future. See, so Earth's rotation is in fact going to slow down eventually, and it is eventually the Earth will end up tidally locked with the Sun. So it must slow down. Okay, so that's why a leap second so what is a leap second? Well, basically, it's an extra second added to the end of a calendar month in UTC, 
or coordinate a universal time. It's added preferably at the end of June or December, or next most preferentially March or September, but it could be added at the end of any month. So we could, in principle, have 12 leap seconds in any given year. Now, odds are pretty good that's going to be enough to keep things in sync for quite a long time. Uh, but eventually we're going to have to come up with a, a better solution for when we end up having every month is going to have a leap second in it every year. But that it should be quite a long time off. So uh, we have plenty of time to figure out another solution. Now, leap seconds do cause some problems. There's software bugs in computers and so on that, that uh, don't handle them properly. GPS receivers don't handle them properly some, some of the time. Uh, testing software sometimes gets them wrong. Uh, and then you've got things that the likes of Google and Amazon do that uh, to avoid having that 60th second or 61st second in a minute where they'll, they'll smear the seconds out so they're slightly longer for that a period of time leading up to or after the leap second. So there's all sorts of things that can go wrong or things that do cause random weirdnesses. And in some circumstances, having the time wrong can actually be potentially a security risk, uh, although uh, protocols that can't handle a, a clock uh, clock um, uh, what skew uh, are buggy by by design because they're assuming a, an environment that is actually sane and you can't assume that anyway uh, there's a lot of bugs that show up periodically and uh, so, some time back uh, there were some substantial problems from uh, some recent leap seconds although the most recent one didn't seem to cause a huge pile of trouble there were problems and you know this affects things like stock exchanges and so on as well where you need a strict ordering of events to figure out what's actually going on Okay, fine, so leap seconds have a bit of a problem, uh, but it's mostly implementation problems. And these problems really come up because leap seconds do not happen often enough that they're actually in the minds of developers. And they don't get tested properly. Uh, and on top of it, there's a chance of having a negative leap second, which has never happened, which... Uh, means that the code paths for dealing with a negative leap second are completely untested in the wild. So if we ever have one of those, we could have some interesting times. Uh, and it, it, Although it's likely to be less problematic than a extra second because it won't give uh, software that it expects minutes with 60 seconds in them, it won't give them a heart attack because they got a 61st second. It'll just look like a time interval was two seconds instead of one second. And that's probably going to cause less chaos overall if it's implemented wrong. That's assuming it doesn't actually do something weird like uh, suddenly tell you it's uh, uh, January 1st, 1800 or something stupid like that. Uh, and if that happens, well, you know, you could have some real chaos going. Okay, so leap seconds... Uh, they're there to keep our wall clocks basically in sync with what the rotation of the Earth is doing. And that actually is a pretty good idea for the same reason that time zones are a pretty good idea. Uh, why having local time instead of everybody using coordinated universal time is a pretty decent idea. Uh, it generally makes life easier and it's easier for travelers as well. So... Uh, overall, it's a pretty good idea. But there's a lot of people that have proposed abolishing leap seconds and they have ideas for replacements. Now, it's not clear that any of these ideas are necessarily actually better. Uh, personally, I think the idea of leap seconds is stupid, but I can't think of a better solution either. So, 
maybe it's not so stupid when you get down to it. Like, I, I used to think that maybe we should have leap hours or leap minutes in, instead and do this less often. But then, over the past few iterations of the leap second, I've seen the bugs and stuff that pop up, and I've realized that something that happens less frequently doesn't get debugged. Like, take a look at uh, the Y2K thing. There were two problems with Y2K. One being that, uh, uh, you know, we had a whole bunch of things using two digits for dates and uh, stuff that was assuming that uh, the year coming back from certain uh, calls was actually a, uh, uh, just the last two digits of the year. But in fact, it wasn't. It was actually the year less 1900. So instead, they would just put 19 in front of the two digits. Now, that was wrong, regardless what the result was going to be. But then you get a bunch of stuff that said now the year is 19,100. So you had some, some glitches there. Uh, but the other problem was that the year 2000 was a leap year. And anything that was built to understand that century years are not leap years, but didn't understand that uh, the 400 year, the, the one years divisible by 400 are leap years, they would have got it wrong. And there were some that did. Uh, although it was less, that was a less likely problem, because usually the glitch with leap years is they don't handle the century years properly at all. And then it'll tell you that 1900 or 2100 are leap years. So anyway, uh, but that stuff doesn't trigger often. And that leads to stuff not getting debugged properly because it doesn't break in the real world for a long time. And that's what would happen with leap minutes or leap hours. The stuff for handling it would never get debugged. And then, thing, then you'd have a massive Y2K problem whenever one was coming. So leap seconds, which happen on average about every 18 months, actually start looking like a pretty smart idea because they happen often enough that we get smaller bits of pain regularly for stuff that's implemented wrong. So there we go. We have... Uh, Leap, uh, leap seconds are maybe the best solution, at least for now, until we actually have to change the length of the day. So, well, that's a lot of chaos for just because the uh, world and the nature doesn't fit into nice boxes like we want it to. Uh, there is an interesting uh, sidebar to all of this, and that is that uh, if we can actually work out the best solution for this type of divergence between, say, atomic time, which does count monotonically and doesn't have modifications like, like leap seconds to it, if we can work out a sensible way to handle things like atomic time versus coordinated universal time, and if we can get to using, say, atomic time or GPS time underneath as our, our base time standard that the computers use for ticking time, and then convert to universal time or what have you at display time or, or even at system, you know, system call time when you get asked for universal time, then we'll probably have less overall problems with computer systems. Because it'll mean we'll be able to, say, uh, implement planet-specific uh, time scales similar to coordinated universal time for other planets like Mars or, or even the Moon, for instance, uh, or, or planets and other, other uh, star systems or what have you. And we'll have it worked out basically how to do that with the software before we get in a situation where we have to do that. And it also means that we'll be able to handle the situation where if we ever decide to change our timekeeping standard for Earth away from coordinated universal time, if we're still using, say, something like atomic time or GPS time as the underlying ticker, 
Well, then we don't have to change the core timekeeping code, the counting code, the ticking code. We can just change the calls for getting the time. So hopefully we'll actually figure this all out and start doing something sensible long before we have major colonies anywhere else, long before we have to deal with this sort of thing on other planets. But knowing humanity, we'll leave it until uh, three days after we need it to actually start working on it. Uh, take a look at the fact that the uh, discussion about whether leap seconds should continue has been tabled and deferred a few times now by the international time body, uh, you know, hand, uh, standards type people. So who knows? Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Meanwhile, uh, December 31st, 2016 is going to be one second longer than normal. Uh, in mountain time, that means uh, we're going to get clocks go from, uh, well, it'll come at 5 p.m. is mid it would be UTC midnight, so it'll say 4.59.59, 4.59.60, 5.00. That's in 12-hour notation, so I guess that would be 16.59.59, 16.59.60, actually. Uh, and if you happen to be watching a clock that understands leap seconds and actually implements it and knows about it, you'll actually see that 60 appear. Uh, and maybe that's some amusement for you on December 31st uh, or January 1st if you're on the other side of the Prime Meridian. So there you have it. Uh, there's my uh, ramble on leap seconds. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, be sure to subscribe. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.